goodness. Hi, how are you? You been smoking that 420? No, I haven't. Yeah, you know, it's sitting kind of low. Little. All right, what you got for me? I'm unemployed. Uh, I just started a business, and all the only I got behind me is my girlfriend. And I don't uh, want to like. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You invested yeah. all your money in starting this business? Basically, yeah. I used and to uh, be a And you're unemployed? Driver. And you're unemployed? Yes, sir. I kind of sacrificed everything to get one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, my bad. How long have you been doing this business? I just started. And How, what does that mean? What does that mean? Three months. Three months. And ago. you've been unemployed for how long? Ooh, close to almost a year. It's been kind of hard to get everything together. Sir, this is unacceptable. Yeah, I know. I hope you didn't come here looking for sympathy. Oh, no, 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 no. Heck no. You're, do you have both your limbs? Yes, sir. Then why don't you have a job? How much do you weigh? That's none of your business. I told you I was fat. Oh, okay. We don't play that shit on my channel. You get your big fat ass on somewhere then. Huh? How old are you? Huh? 29. 29. So what's the issue? Um. So once we get in a relationship, they truly show their insecurities and they don't like me being around certain VIP scenes or going to certain events and venues and want to sit me down and you know have me barefoot and pregnant whatever you want to call it but that uh, no. that's not so but of course We've all heard various different hot takes on Kevin Samuels over the years. If you don't know, Kevin Samuels was a very hot blogger that came on the scene initially being an image consultant for men. And he later graduated to being a dating consultant in relationships. And though it was not explicitly expressed that he was there to be a dating consultant for black relationships, obviously his popularity was amplified in the black manosphere and amongst black women. If you've never gone and got a manicure, the nerve of you niggas. You are not a grown goddamn man with raggedy ass nails. As we know, there was great controversy around the way that he passed. And this is not what we're getting into today. We're getting into something totally different. I want to tell you what Kevin Samuels actually lied about. But before I do that, I'm going to tell you the truth of what he said. You're not ready yet. I understand that. Kevin. You're trying, and this is what happens to so many young black men because we don't have fathers and we're not juniors. We are trying to become men before time and we think we're, try we're trying to do all this stuff too soon. Black Mantle's fear definitely became very amplified between 2020 and 2023. And I would say that that surge was mainly due to us being on lockdown during the pandemic. The reason why this was important is because a lot of men who were not skilled laborers or who had a particular skill set that was undeniable found themselves couch surfing sitting at home babysitting helping children with homework and it literally didn't give men that sense of purpose while it may be a small reason as to why this hyper masculinity began to take precedent it is still something that i think was part of the recipe to create these 
the scenarios that we are seeing today where hypermasculinity was quite pedestalized for a couple of years. It's the same thing as if, you know, some of you, if you know, you know, if you're creating sweet potato pie, if you don't have that sugar, the sweet potato pie is is lost. You can have nutmeg, you can have sweet potatoes, you can have eggs, but baby, if you ain't got that sugar, your sweet potato pie is lost. So I would say that the shutdowns and men not being essential workers, because some of them were working simple jobs like retail and such and such, this created a dynamic where men for the first time probably felt the most useless they've ever felt. Point two million men prime working age this is between the age of 25 and 54 these men are not working and even worse they're not looking to work the vast majority of these prime age men are spending around 2,000 hours a year on screens they're not doing housework either the data shows they're not pulling their weight around the house if they've got a woman in the house that's working for them and that's what's happening or others are working for them and supporting them well they're not helping out with housework they're not caring for the children they're not volunteering and adding value the other reason this matters is that the souls of men are dying. The data shows that men who aren't working or looking for work are spending less time doing anything productive to get these men back out of the cave. we got to change the narrative about work. Work isn't something that sucks that you should only do just to make it through the weekend, but it's being supported by anti-work policies from our government. We have more entitlements, more reasons for people not to work than ever before. I would also suggest to you that we need some tough love because a lot of you out there are supporting these very men because you feel like you're supposed to. If you don't work, you don't eat. So you know what we need to do? You love ones and frenzy to kick these guys out and say, I'm not supporting you anymore because I love you, because I care for you. Go work. And we also, the changing landscape of the economy, because a lot of what men were seeing were women and their jobs being far more substantial and significant than men in their jobs it's just a theory let me know what you think in the comments but anyway kevin samuels goes viral for putting this young woman on blast after she put he put this young woman on blast he had his audience hook line and sinker the important things that Kevin tried to instill in people is a realistic point of view about relationships. However, his point of view was vague and surface level. He judged women by their, uh, their beauty, their youth, and their ability to reproduce. So basically, it was based on primarily on how good you look how young you were and if you could have a man's babies okay and what he also based it on for the men is where you were financially how good you were in bed or are in bed and maybe way way low on the totem pole is how good you look you don't want to build a resume you don't want to actually have it where it counts to have the real leverage you want her to respect your masculinity and your manhood because you have a piss and an xy chromosome it don't work that way women respect resources you can't check a bitch because you got nothing check you got nothing to check with so those were many of the questions that he asked each time when he would do his podcast and he would compare that to say hey the older you are, the less substantial you are in the dating and sexual market. The less you are of a 10 without your makeup, mind you, the less important you are in the sexual marketplace. Many men jumped on this ideology and it was a sentiment that was echoed throughout black manosphere red pill who eventually became a source of the alt-right pipeline but we'll talk about that because that's a story for another time that being said what it was doing was it was putting the power back into the man's hands and this was shortly after the fall of disgraced guru Derek jackson who kept his foot on men's necks only to find out that he was fucking the shit out of many different women and cheating on his wife constantly so when he fell from grace it really was a time where 
there was an opening for relationship gurus and because the pandering to women simply just fell by the wayside by proving Derek Jackson to be a whole huge fucking liar it was an opening for men's voices to be able to be heard to lift every voice and sing so what Kevin often did was with his very linear and binary criteria, he would judge each woman by that. And it was for the woman to be able to get a realistic perspective of herself so that she could align herself with a man of equal value. In the minds of the onlooker and anyone who doesn't scratch beneath the surface, this seemed like the appropriate approach and the right thing to do. It made perfect sense. But what I have found and what I let a lot of women know is there is a component that Kevin lied about. And here is that component. I have found that if you compare looks, age, and birth ability, there is going to be a sliding scale for women. But there's one, there's a couple of things that men need. There's a couple of things that was seldom emphasized and discussed in Kevin's rhetoric, but he did actually say. However, when a woman's obsessed with men, that man tends to have better outcomes. When a woman is obsessed with her man to the point to where she's willing to be inspirational to him, he has better outcomes. And who benefits from those outcomes? She does. Somebody needs to love somebody more. And gentlemen, she needs to love you more than you love her. Even though he's speaking from a space of exploitation, he said something very key. When a woman puts her energy and pours into a man, gives him inspiration, he does far better in life in fact many times kevin would tell his audience that elite men are not taken seriously unless they are married you got a big dick huh you have a big dick i mean it's above average i ain't no ron above, jeremy no no, no 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 i asked you if you had a big dick i didn't say it was above average i don't know what that is really uh nigga you know if you got a big dick or not stop the bullshit Every dude know whether or not he got a big dick. I know I got a big dick. You don't know? I mean. You don't have a big I, dick. That's the point. You don't have a big dick. You don't have a big wallet. You a big, you a fat dude. And you got a lot of nerve thinking you should get choosy signals at five foot ten and three hundred pounds, making less than a thousand dollars a month at 20 years old. And women should approach you. What they get, they don't even get a big dick. Now, the things that he failed to make a part of his rhetoric consistently was the fact that men in order for their masculinity to be vindicated they require a lot of internal things that women naturally have that men in general tend not to have fully developed or active those things being empathy compassion encouragement men constantly need to be encouraged to help stabilize them and give them focus now while these things are consistently looked at as expendable they absolutely are not you see even if a man is focused and at his peak he generally tends to surround women around him to help him to strive for something check out what will smith said in this red table talk i don't know if i've ever said this you know how i'm a scientist so everything is science for mm -hmm. me yes i read something when we first got together that the most successful men in history have been married right i knew that i would squander my life if i was running around yeah right. okay the way my mind works i can only excel for a woman now you see will smith is admitting that him himself cannot do anything without 
a woman being a part of it. Now, you would think that this is just Will Smith. He's a punk. He's a simp. Lies. This is actually true for many, many men. And what women need to know about this is that these things that they downplay their significance, your compassion, your empathy, your inspiration, your patience, your love, your uh, belief in them. These things that they tend to downplay are things that are inextricably linked to the significance of their masculinity. Many men will not feel masculine unless they got a woman somewhere supporting them and pushing them forward. And if you take a look at how there has been a shift in this rhetoric online about the black family structure in particular specifically black men have been talking endlessly for the last four years about restoring the black family structure interestingly enough prior to that it was bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks but now they want to put so much into a family and having a nuclear home base to build upon as of recent data black men in the u.s have an average income around fifty-seven thousand eight hundred and a median income of forty-three thousand seven hundred in comparison to white men who have an average income of eighty-two thousand three hundred and a median income of fifty-eight thousand while asian men lead with an average of ninety-five thousand four hundred and a median income of sixty-five thousand for black men reaching the top one percent of earners requires an income of approximately 283,900 compared to 489,200 for white men and 530,000 for Asian men. Obviously, the disparities highlight an ongoing income gap in racial groups and systematic factors. But because black men no longer want to constantly associate themselves with criminality, they want to be associated with being businessmen, moguls, tycoons, having power. This is the reason why they are starting to realize, and even Kevin Samuel said it himself, that most men who make it into the upper echelons of society are what? Married. And part of that is not just how young she is, how beautiful she is, how many children she can birth, but it is also having the mindset of encouragement, patience, and empathy, all internal factors that operate like gas to the vehicle, which is a man, the man's the vehicle. And the energy, love, and patience of a woman is the gas. And it keeps him going. Sure, he can change out gas stations, but he still needs the gas. So regardless of how cute she is, how sexy she is, how, how fine she is, that's where they need that gas. In addition to that, you will notice how they consistently tell women who have been able to use that same energy for themselves to push themselves along and help them to achieve upward mobility in life. How that doesn't matter and they don't care because unless you got a man and you did that for a man, he, he no one cares that you have been able to become a functioning adult who is not only um, surviving but thriving. Right? They also need the labor of women, the cooking, the cleaning, the, the setting up of his appointments, the giving him a list to go to the store with, the helping to rear the children and develop the children. It gives men purpose. And with the fallout of the pandemic, I believe that it gave a lot of men a reality check and they started to feel more useless in society. Couple that with the, the many, many men who are now reported as not being participants in 
the workforce and not having any desire to return to the workforce because they don't feel like their jobs matter. So all of this manosphere, hyper-masculinity, hegemonic masculinity has all been employed to reiterate and reignite the significance of masculinity in our society. But where Kevin Samuels lied at is making it seem like the only thing that men really could benefit from for women is their beauty their youth and whether or not they could have babies and, uh what you won't hear them say is how much they require the internal resources of women in order to survive 